Hello everyone, welcome to TechSafire. This video is on authorization in SQL Server. I will create a small business case which is very commonly used where we restrict the user to do certain things and then we add certain privileges to one particular user and then we use impersonate to do a particular task. Now in this example, what I will do is I will create an app user which will have execute, select, insert and update uh, permissions on particular database which will be like this order app. And post that, what I will do is I will add a user which can disable or enable triggers. And let's say there is a case where you want to disable the trigger when you are even using the same user. Then how you can use impersonation and do that task. So give an example, I'm just creating this user. So these scripts will be all available on YouTube uh, description itself. So if not, then I will provide another link of my website there. You can download all the script. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating, adding a new user, adding a new login for it, uh, or adding first the login and then adding user to it. And then I'm creating a role. Now, why I'm adding a role? Because if I'm having a role, it's easier to give permissions instead of just picking in Nick picking one and like one after the other. So here the user can execute and store procedure and generally ex use an execute command. It can be used for many purposes. And then I'm just adding that user to that role. Now, as I've done, I can just go and uh, connect my database with this user. Uh, let me just take the password and connect my SQL server with that. Now, as I have connected this with the user, I can select and do any other task, whatever I can do in other things. Just one thing I cannot do is I cannot do any DDL operations, it means I cannot create a table or delete a table. Give an example. If I just go here and try to say, let's say create table test and I will give ID as int. And if I try to run, it will throw an error because table uh, create table permission are denied because that I haven't added to my DDL. Okay, let me keep it open so that you can we can practice other things. But now let's say there is a case uh, I had to add a trigger onto a table. This trigger do, does, uh, doesn't do anything. Just it's an ins after insert delete update trigger, and it is just printing a statement. So if I go in my uh, this table and dine, dine, dine table, if I go in the triggers, I can see the trigger. If I try to disable this trigger, here you can say I'm getting an error. If I go here, it says I don't have a permission. But from an admin user, I can still do that task. I can disable, sorry, I can refresh. I can disable the trigger successfully. And I can enable the trigger. But I cannot do from the when I'm logged into uh, login as an app user, I cannot do. So this is an app user and this is an, uh, you can say Windows authentication. So it's an admin user. Well, let's say I have a task where I have to disable this, you can say trigger before inserting and doing XYZ operation to my uh, data, but I do, don't want to maintain two different users for my API or any other service. So what I will generally do is I will create and one more user. I think I have copy pasted the same script so I can just get rid of this one. So I'm just creating an, uh, you can say another lot uh, trigger user, which will be an of admin, uh, like a DV owner group. But one more thing is like why I'm creating with a password, why not just a Windows user? Because for Windows user, I need to have a Windows user so that I can integrate. But uh, that's kind of a little bit messy to create. I'm just creating a normal trigger user and uh, same login and username with that. And I'm adding this user to and DV owner. Now, as I've added to a DB owner, so if I connect with this user, so I will just take this as in password. If I go in here and I can say trigger underscore user and use this user, I can again do disable and enable of that trigger, which I cannot do with app user. The reason is because this user is added as DB owner. So DB owner has all uh, rights on the database. So I can still enable and disable. And again, just to repeat, if I do it with this one, app user, it will throw an error because this doesn't have a privilege. So if there isn't a disable trigger has an error. Now, how I can do that task? So assumably I have to disable the trigger for certain, for one particular task, uh, how to achieve that. So what I will do is I will say in grant impersonate user, so what I can say is app user can impersonate trigger user. 
Now what I will do is let's say I will create a proc create proc because I don't want to run this. Uh, you can say impersonate user command also from my API. So I will just create an uh, just an SP to do that. So test proc test procedure as and then what I will do is I will say execute this as a trigger user also disable the trigger do certain tasks select one as something and then revert and also enable the trigger enable the trigger and revert now what is this revert is when i am running it as a user i can revert back to the normal user so even before this let me just show you one more example which will be more easy to understand so let's say if i run this command select s user name so this methods give me my current user which is an app user if i run this particular command say like execute as a trigger user and run now so any instance which i'm running even though the session user is still app user but i am running the command as in this user but now let's say once my work is done i want to revert so there is a command revert if i just do a revert and rerun this command what will happen is i will run back as an app user so i'm just creating this store procedure uh, okay, so the creation of this store procedure is denied to this user because as we don't have create, let me just create it from the admin, but it has an execute permission, so it will be able to execute. So now if I execute this store procedure, so you remember the first task, it will impersonate. And let me do one thing. Let me just send this data only. So what is the user it has been running as? And after the revert also, let me just run the same command. After the revert also, let it return two result sets. So let me just alter the statement. And if I run this procedure, and now if I run this, uh, execute this procedure, here the first output says trigger user because the first in uh, in uh, in like we are impersonating trigger user and then it gives the trigger user once uh, and I have disabled the trigger and then enable the trigger. Just to refresh, if I go in here, I have, it is already enabled. And also now, after the revert, my user is app user. So this is one quick demonstration how uh, authorization in SQL Server works and how you can impersonate. Impersonation is very important. A lot of times, let's say your user doesn't have access to certain things, but and you have to do that. So what you can do is you can create a parallel user and give an impersonation, expose the like this impersonation just using a store procedure. If you want to hide, you can create a binary store procedure. Uh, like P uh, T SQL store procedure in that what happens you can uh, like you can enable encryption so that no one can see the definition of store procedure and in that in person happens no one knows uh, but again this need to be still kept the secret because if you give this user back to the user it becomes a problem or else what you can create is you can add a windows user and impersonate and give that as a db owner permission and then impersonate then there will be no password been set up so no one will can log in from outside the system i hope this demo has cleared uh, all the doubts about uh, you can say how the rules works and how the impersonation work if you have still have a question you can ping me on my email id contact at the or you can reach me on my phone have a good day bye bye